In this video, I'm going to show you how to flash a NEOS camera. Make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, make sure you hit subscribe below so you don't miss out on future videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech, and in this video we're going to flash a NEOS smart camera with custom Defang firmware. So let's get going! So what is the NEOS smart camera? Well the NEOS smart camera is basically the UK's equivalent of the WISE camera. Both of them are built on the Xiaomi Defang 1S camera body, but they've got their own firmware on them. These are great cameras, don't get me wrong. If you want a proper camera or a professional grade camera, these aren't for you. But if you just want to have a quick look at what's going on in your house, or see who's at the door for example, they're great. And let's not forget, they're cheap. So why would you want to flash it with custom firmware? Well the NEOS cameras come with NEOS software built in. And that NEOS software connects to the NEOS cloud. This enables you to do things like cloud recording, or have various subscription models that you can pay for so they can store your footage for you. But if they're storing it on the cloud, that's on the internet, and it could be hacked. In all likelihood, you'll be fine. But if you're a bit security conscious, and don't want to have your camera exposed to the internet, especially if you've got a camera inside your house, then you're going to want to take it off the internet and keep it local. That's where the Defang firmware comes in. If you can, while the camera's still got the original firmware on it, connect it to your router and get the MAC address. You're then going to want to set a static IP on your router, as this means it'll be easier to tell if your camera is actually working later on. Now we know why we want to flash it, so let's do it! For this to work, we're going to need a Neo Smart Camera, or other compatible camera like the Wise Cam or the Xiaomi Cam, and we're going to need an SD card. I'm using a 32GB SanDisk Ultra, but I don't think it really matters what card you use. We're also going to need the custom firmware. Thank you to Elias for making this available to us all. We're going to head over to the GitHub page, scroll down and click installation. Here we have a list of the cameras that we can use that are compatible. If we click on the camera that we have, it'll download a cfw.bin file. This file will tell the camera that it needs to boot from the custom firmware on the SD card, rather than the firmware on the internal storage when we get to it. We're also going to need to download the entire repository, as this contains the custom firmware. So we're going to download that as a zip while we're here as well. The key thing here to make this whole process work is using the SD card formatter app. If you try using Disk Utility, it won't work. If you don't have it already, download and install the SD card formatter. There's a link below if you need it. There's a lot of info out there in the instructions about needing to make a partition on your drive. I find that you don't need to do that if you're using the SD card formatter app. Once you've got it downloaded, Open it up and select the SD card that you have plugged into your computer and make sure you're using the overwrite function, not the quick format function. Otherwise it won't work again. Once happy, click format, enter your password and let it run. This may take quite a while. For me, on a 32GB SD card, it took over half an hour. If you have a smaller SD card, I'm sure it'll take a bit less time. But don't worry about it taking a long time. This is necessary to make sure the firmware works properly. Once it's done, we're going to copy the cfw.bin file from our downloads and paste it into our new SD card. Once it's in here, we need to rename it demo.bin. Once happy, we can eject the card and put it into our camera whilst it's unplugged. Now next to the SD card slot in the camera is the setup button. This is a really small and painful button and you're going to be holding it down for a long time. You have been warned. You're going to need to hold the button down and plug your camera into power. The light should go from yellow to blue. Once it's blue, we wait 20 seconds with our finger still pressed down, and after that 20 seconds, we can release the button. At this point, it should stay blue for a bit, then go to yellow, then back to blue, then back to yellow. We can then leave it for a little while to make sure it's happened. If it stays yellow for a few minutes, then we can be sure that it's worked. Once this is the case, we can unplug the camera and start installing the custom firmware. We can now delete the demo.bin file from the root of our SD card. 
we're going to copy over the entire contents of the firmware underscore mod folder from our zipped download and paste it into the root of our SD card. So here we should have a selection of folders, a couple of .sh files and a couple of .txt files and that should all be in the root of your SD card. Now inside the config folder on your SD card there should be a document called wpa underscore supplement dot conf dot dist. We're going to rename that to get rid of the dot dist bit so it will become wpa underscore supplement dot conf. We can then edit this document. If you open it up in your text editor you can find that you need to input your Wi-Fi SSID and password. Once happy we can save it eject the SD card and put it back into our unplugged camera. We can then plug the camera in. We don't need to hold any buttons down this time. The light should go from yellow to blue to yellow to blue and then off. When the light is off we can be pretty confident that the new firmware has taken on and is currently running. We can check that using a ping function in our command browser. If we ping the static IP address that we made earlier then we should get a response. And if that happened, we know that the camera is connected to our network and so is working. If this hasn't worked, then I recommend you go back to the beginning, re-wipe your entire SD card and start again with the demo.bin file. It may take a while, but using this method it's always worked for me first time. We can then head over to the web interface and see our camera. To access it, we just type in the IP address of our camera into our web browser. It'll ask for a username and password. The username is root, the password is iSmart12. But you can change this later on in the settings. Once here, we can see our camera interface and we can start and stop RTSP streams and play with motion detection and all sorts. Make sure you keep an eye out for part two of this video where I'm going to show you how you can integrate it into Home Assistant and use MQTT to control it. If you haven't already, hit the bell icon below so you're notified when this comes out. And there we go. We've managed to flash our NEOS camera with custom firmware so it's completely off the cloud. Make sure you hit subscribe below to find out more about my tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.